Literature gives us the opportunity to experience lives, perspectives, and worlds different from our own. Though remember, friend, a good story has many readings, and this is but one. Okay, picture this. Three people return home to find a mysterious young woman with no memory sitting in front of their house. Her skin is baby soft, she's soaking wet, and her breath smells like milk. Wanting to help, they invite her into their home. But soon, strange things start happening, and they begin to suspect that this young woman is actually the ghost of a murdered child somehow returned to life. That is our first introduction to the title character of Toni Morrison's Beloved, a powerful multi-layered novel about the long-term psychological effects of slavery and how trying to bury that past can inflict even more trauma. And while topics like this are never easy to face, this book is a perfect example of how good literature can help readers with some of the heavy lifting. Thanks so much to World Anvil for helping us discuss important worlds in literature. So you haven't read Beloved by Toni Morrison? Well, there's no time like the present. It's a Pulitzer Prize winning novel and is widely regarded as one of the best contemporary works of American fiction. So today, we're going to discuss a few of the key plot points and themes. Though before we begin, two quick disclaimers. First, this book contains strong adult themes, including violence, murder, and sexual assault. So viewer and reader discretion is advised. And second, let's call out the elephant in the room here. Exactly, Zoe. I am a white man discussing a book by a black woman about an atrocity committed on black people by white people, meaning my life experience is a world away from both Toni Morrison and her characters in Beloved. However, this also means that today's episode is a perfect example of this series' central thesis. Great books can help people recognize perspectives different from their own. So while I can't pretend to be any authority on the experiences portrayed in this book, I can discuss with you some of the things you might discover while reading it. So, let's you and I travel to Cincinnati, Ohio, and witness the ghosts of the past haunting 124 Bluestone Road. The year is 1873, and this is the home of Setha and her daughter Denver. Years earlier, Setha had been enslaved at a labor camp in Kentucky, ironically called Sweet Home, where the owner was an abusive man called Schoolteacher, who treated the people he enslaved like animals. Now, while Setha has done her best to put her past behind her, her past isn't done with her. See, just after escaping Sweet Home, Setha's eldest daughter, only a young child at the time, was killed. And due to financial hardships, she could only afford to carve a single word on her tombstone, Beloved. But then, strange things began happening in Setha's home, and everyone begins to suspect that her child's poltergeist now haunts the house. Eighteen years pass. Then one day, Setha's old friend Paul D. shows up on her porch. He'd grown up with her at Sweet Home and had escaped enslavement as well, though he's avoided his trauma by locking up all of his emotions, as he put it, in the rusted tobacco tin of his heart. Eventually, they strike up a romance, and the ghost haunting the home flies into a rage. But Paul D. stands his ground and manages to drive the spirit out of the house. That's when he learns that Setha and Denver have barely left their home in years. So he convinces them to come out with him to a local fair for a much-needed good time. But not all is well when they return to 124 Bluestone Road. Because while the three are out, that mysterious young woman from the beginning of the episode rises from a local creek and ends up in their yard. Upon seeing her, Setha has a sensation that reminds her of her water breaking. And though the stranger is a grown woman, she has many qualities of a baby, and all three are stunned when she reveals her name, Beloved. Over the following weeks, Beloved says and does things that make them suspect she may be, somehow, Setha's dead child returned to life like having memories that only her daughter could have. However, Beloved also has a first-hand recollection of Setha's mother's passage in captivity from Africa, and it seems even more memories of one or more of the millions of other human beings who lived and died on that forced trip. Setha and Paul D. also start to remember the innumerable atrocities they experienced at Sweet Home, and for the first time in years, they begin to confront their traumas. Setha forms a desperate, destructive bond with Beloved and relates her entire history to her, where Paul D., on the other hand, is horrified by Beloved and finds he can only sleep soundly when he's outside of the house. The exhuming of forgotten or repressed history is one of Beloved's central themes, and author Toni Morrison has said she based her novel on the true story of Margaret Garner, as well as first-person accounts from other formerly enslaved women. Morrison also dedicated the book to the estimated 60 million kidnapped and often forgotten African people who were murdered on the slave ships crossing the Atlantic, each one somebody's beloved. 
And the beloved in the book reflects this as an excellent example of an allegorical character, playing an important story role while also serving as a symbol for the novel's central themes. For instance, Beloved embodies her own character history, as well as the whole history of the atrocity of slavery. Even Beloved's name resonates with meaning, representing both her relationship to Setha as well as the circumstances of her death. Which brings us back to the story. Worried about the impact Beloved is having on Setha, Paul D. sets out to learn more about her history. From a co-worker, he learns that shortly after Setha arrived in Cincinnati, her enslaver schoolteacher came to town and was intent on kidnapping her and her children back to Sweet Home. When he had arrived on horseback to 124 Bluestone Road, there was no time left to escape and nowhere left to run. So out of her enormous love for her children and desperate desire to spare them the atrocities she experienced, Setha decides the only way she can save them is to take their lives though she's only able to kill her eldest daughter before she's stopped and schoolteacher finds them. But seeing this tragedy as nothing but a ruined investment, he leaves in disgust. Back in the present, Beloved is exactly the age her daughter would have been had she lived with a scar under her neck where the fatal wound would be. This living ghost of the past now appears to be draining the very life out of Setha. So her daughter Denver, worried for her mother, gathers her courage and leaves the house to find help. Now, I'll ask that you read the book yourself to draw your own conclusions about Beloved's identity and ultimate expulsion, as I believe the author intended. Because in our last moments of this episode, I'd like to focus on the conclusion. Paul D. returns to 124 Bluestone Road and finds Setha in deep mourning, both of them changed by their time with Beloved and subsequent confrontation with the past. That rusted tobacco tin, where Paul D. kept all of his feelings locked up, has been opened, and he at last feels like a whole man. For her part, Setha feels like she's lost her best thing by losing Beloved. But Paul D. reassures her that she herself is her own best thing. And having confronted their history, the two decide to start creating a new future together. One thing you'll learn from reading Toni Morrison's Beloved is that no matter how hard we try to forget the traumas of our past, they're never just going to go away on their own. They'll continue to haunt us and drain us. And if we as individuals and as a nation aren't willing to face the atrocities of slavery honestly, the people who still carry its scars will never truly be able to heal. Beloved is an incredibly important and well-written depiction of the profound wounds left on black bodies and souls by the institution of slavery. And make no mistake, that makes for some harrowing reading. But we do owe that day of reckoning to our own ghosts so that we can start to do the work towards building a brighter future. And reading this book is a great place to start. And speaking of great starting places, if you're setting out to tell important stories, be they in the form of a novel, video game, or RPG, you're going to need to keep all of your ideas organized, which is precisely where World Anvil can really come in handy. World Anvil is an award-winning toolset used by millions of world builders, writers, and gamers that helps you create, store, and organize your world setting. And I gotta say, this toolset just has it all. You can use it to craft entire RPG campaigns, tracking timelines, family trees, and diplomatic relationships, create interactive maps to help bring your world to life, and once you're ready, share what you've built with your readers, players, patrons, or whoever you want to experience your world. Not to mention, with over 25 spectacular visual themes at your disposal, it's perfect for all genres, from sci-fi to fantasy, historical fiction, and space opera. Meaning that when the heroes in my rifts slash gungeon slash 17th century rom-com inevitably misuse the Stargate they found, not only will they be teleported to the world of Kingdom Hearts, but I can use World Anvil to make sense of it all. Seriously, it's that powerful. Best of all, you can check out World Anvil for yourself absolutely free, or for a limited time, receive 40% off any annual membership by using the code extra credits. Then not only will the fantastical worlds you dream up be built better, but you'll really be helping out our channel in the process. Once again, that's code extra credits for 40% off any annual membership, and thanks so much again. We can't wait to see the worlds you build. Hey there, Ahmed Ziad Turk, Joseph Blame, Alicia Bramble, Kyle Murgatroyd, Casey Muscha, O'Reels One, and Dominic Valenciana. The legends are you! 